Hey, and welcome to the Hypothalamic Amenorrhea Podcast, an adulting advice podcast production. I'm Danny Sheriff, and this is the place to come if you care about getting your period regularly. This podcast aims to educate, inform, and keep you motivated on your period and HA recovery track. Let's dive in. And guys, please remember that I am not a doctor and nothing on this show should be taken as medical advice. Always seek the advice of your physician. Do you ever feel like this whole HA thing is extremely lonely? Well, that is because it can be, but it does not have to be. When I was going through HA, I spent ages and ages combing through the internet looking for information, resources, and just people who I could relate to about HA. And it really slowed down my progress and made my progress take a while because I was having a hard time connecting the dots and trusting that I really needed to make changes and heal my reproductive health. I definitely wish this podcast existed back then, but it did not. And I honestly feel like, well, felt like, sorry, not feel like, that I didn't even work out that much. Like, I was not that small and like I didn't actually fit the bill for someone who quote unquote should have this type of problem and after a few years of healing research and experiencing almost every single up and down that you could possibly experience at least that's how it felt it was clear to me um, that my next step to kind of give back and to change the just the challenges that are in our way with HA is to the time is to the time is here to create a space for women who are in this same boat a place for women to go to who are experiencing exactly what I experienced and so today that place is called the HA society and the idea for the HA society was to be more than just another Facebook group I wanted to create a place with actual interaction that has face-to-face calls, that has a one-on-one coaching for everyone inside if they need it, and a place where the experts and practitioners come to you, not the other way around, you Googling everything and, you know, listening to a million quadrillion different podcasts trying to find answers. I wanted somewhere where the answers are going to come to you. And with that, (laughs) the HA Society is open today. Woo! We actually open once a month on the new moon and only for a few days. So make sure that you get in quick before it closes. We close each month so that myself and co-coach Ashley can focus wholeheartedly on the group for the remaining three and a half weeks that the group is closed for. So make sure you don't miss your chance to come on in. And when you're when you join, you'll be greeted by yours truly. And you'll be able to start registering for upcoming events, all of which are included in your membership, and all of the community calls. And you can dive into the replays of the past community calls, which is kind of like getting a whole bunch of extra podcast episodes to listen to. And you get to binge the early access episodes of the HA podcast that are not out yet as well. We also have a resource library that I started back in April. And in there you'll find information about HA mindset and tutorials on things like fertility awareness tracking for HAs just to name a few we're always adding to it so what you're waiting for the HA society is open right now and ready for you to dive into the content chat one-on-one with me as much as you would like and most of all start making connections feeling the support and the love and getting back getting that period back on track whether you're in HA right now, or you've had your first few periods and you want to get things optimized, this society, this group of women are for you and they're cheering you on the whole way. It's really, really amazing community in there. And I cannot wait for you to come on in and meet everyone and make some serious progress. So go to thehasociety.com to sign up or the link is here in the show notes and I'll see you guys on the other side. Hello ladies. Welcome back to the Hypothalamic Amenorrhea Podcast. Today we're actually talking about one of my favorite subjects, I suppose, inside of the realm of HA recovery, which is tracking your cycle for hypothalamic amenorrhea or once you've just recovered and getting your first few cycles. So I'm a huge advocate for tracking your cycles using fertility awareness, 
which is a charting system where you track symptoms of your fertility to identify your fertile window and when you're ovulating, when it, you could get pregnant, whether or not you want to or avoid pregnancy. So I'm a fan of it even when you have HH. And I know what a lot of you are thinking, but I don't have a cycle to track yet. Like I don't get it. Why do people talk about tracking your cycles with AJ? Well, trust me, it's valuable to start even without a cycle. But there is a caveat, which is if you are not ready to track something at all, of food, your weight, your cycle, or feeling totally overwhelmed by all of it, don't do it yet. You'll know when the time is right. So don't make this another like, oh, I should be doing this thing. Danny said so. Just nah. I coach plenty of women, both one-on-one uh, and inside of the HA Society, because I do one-on-one coaching weekly. And also I'm always available to the members of the HA Society in the DMs. And there we track their cycles, both before they get their first period and most definitely once they do get it and they're ready to get their second one and beyond. Or maybe we're going to work on getting pregnant ASAP or something like that. Tracking cycles during HA and the early months of recovery, once you have had a period, is helpful because seeing signs of progress in HA can be pretty slow. A lot of the time, it all feels very unknown until the day you finally get a bleed. It's like nothing, 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 period. But that's actually not true. There are plenty of signs that you can learn to identify. So by using your cycle... Um, or by charting your cycle, sorry, you can see if the lifestyle changes that you've been making as a part of your recovery protocol are actually having an impact to your basal body temperature, for example. So we can see this by taking your temperature because many HAs actually have a lower than normal pre-ovulatory basal body temperature. So as we're doing things like increasing food intake, adjusting the frequency that you're eating, gaining weight, de-stressing, and all of those good things, we're actually able to see if this is making a difference in your basal body temperature. If we can see that your basal body temperature is getting up to a baseline that's ideal for you, because there's a certain range that's ideal, then we know that we're on track. And naturally, Tracking your basal body temperature allows us to spot issues and know where to look for creating a custom plan that works best for you. So that's the benefit of basal body temperature. Then there's also cervical mucus production. Okay, so our cervix, uh, the basically inside of the vagina and the bottom end of your uterus, it produces mucus thanks to an increase in estrogen. And that mucus is actually a magical substance that keeps sperm alive while they await you to ovulate so they can fertilize an egg. It's very clever. And when we're not ovulating, we actually don't see this mucus at all. It's just, it's dry. When our body is preparing to ovulate, we do see this mucus. So tracking the mucus production is valuable because we know that this is a sign of our body trying to prepare for ovulation. Now, Tracking allows us to closely monitor and track other major symptoms like breast tenderness and mood. And in general, we're really bad at self-reporting everything and anything. And we have no idea what we've actually seen. Like memory, a memory is the worst. And I'm someone who does this all the time. Oh, I'll be fine. I'll remember. I won't forget that. And then you actually have no idea what you saw. So this is what makes cycle charting really valuable for you as an HAR no matter where you're at in your cycle remembering what you've seen and connecting the dots and actually using that information to form a narrative of what's really happening because because sometimes you'll be like oh I see mucus sometimes and then it goes away and I just I'm broken but if we were actually to like look at the chart and see the pattern we might be able to see some uh, information that we can actually take action with So knowing how to actually chart correctly is the tricky part. Anyone who helps women with cycle tracking will tell you that there's a learning curve and 
working with someone to learn how to chart is going to help you skip that learning curve. This is especially true when you have HA because your charts won't look how they look in the courses and the textbooks. Those examples of those charts are like, and and the things that the teachers are teaching, those are often talking about women who don't have HA. They're definitely talking about women who don't have HA. I've been through these courses and these teachings and they never actually mention, you know, oh, but when someone's not cycling, this is what you can expect to see. They really only talk about what you can expect to see in someone who doesn't have this issue. So just keep in mind that you won't look at the beginning like how the charts look when you Google what a perfect chart looks like. So... And there's also no such thing as a perfect chart. Like that's all rubbish. But what we are looking for, we're not we're not looking for this textbook chart. We're looking for subtle shifts in the data that tell us what might be keeping you in HA and tell us what's going to help you get out of it. So the data from the charts can help us determine if we need to get your body weight up or increase your food intake or adjust your eating schedule. If we need to look at your stresses like caffeine intake, life stress, lack of sleep, you know, work stress, relationships. And if we should be doing a nutritional assessment and see what's missing from your chart. So sometimes, you know, it looks like you're doing everything absolutely optimal. So doing a nutritional assessment, that which we actually have an episode coming out soon about it. And I have a blog up on the um the blog <laughs> articles.thajsociety.com where you can learn how to do a nutritional assessment for yourself so if you're ready to try this on your own first or you just need a quick refresher i'm going to give you some tips to help speed up charting and like the learning curve of charting and get you doing it correctly from the start so tips to chart well with ha the first one is to choose your tools. So charts are the most, like literally you need an actual chart. (laughs) So there's apps and there's paper charting. I don't actually use the apps, but many, many of my clients do. Yeah, probably like three quarters of my clients use the apps. I use paper charts. So you can buy a charting workbook. My favorite one is the Fertility Awareness Mastery Charting Workbook. It's on Amazon and hopefully I put all these things in the show notes (laughs) and I love that book because it also has great information at the front of the book and that allows you to interpret as you go if you forget a fact right or you want to like double check something that you're trying to interpret most of the information the fundamentals are there and it's also pretty (laughs) which is nice to have something you know nice looking by your bedside table and you can also download some like just free ones that you can print off the internet. I know that um, Taking Charge of Your Fertility has some free ones that you can download and use if you wanted to get started with paper charting like that. The reason I like to use paper charting is because A, I don't want to sit in bed and look at my phone when I'm trying to interpret data. And also because, and we're going to get to this soon, but the um the apps generate the information for you and they use an algorithm to determine when ovulation is happening and all the different charts sometimes use slightly different algorithms and although they're helpful especially for people who have not got problematic cycles whatsoever uh you know the apps are going to do a really accurate job for those people but for those of us who have funky cycles There's a lot more context to take in when you're looking at a chart. Actually, there's a ton more context. You know, you're not just a mathematical equation. So that's why I like to use it. But one of the apps in particular that I don't mind is Fertility Friend, and it's free. If you're looking for a chart, a digital chart that shows you your temperature spike, that's easy to read then this this app generates charts that shows you everything, all of your temperatures, all of your other symptoms. It's really easy to read. So I appreciate that one. 
some of the other charts can be harder to read. Um, like they don't necessarily all show the ebbs and flows of your temperature super clearly. They're like minimalist and stylish. And so they're a bit more like, uh, I don't know, they're just not as visually obvious and that can make it a little tiny bit harder to interpret easily. And they, they don't have like every single temperature up the side of the graph. So you like, if you're working with someone, for example, who's interpreting your charts with you, like I am, some of the charts you can actually only read inside of the app. So people have to send me a screenshot of this chart, but the app's super interactive and you need to be able to use your finger to like hover over the different temperatures to actually see what they say. So when someone sends me a chart like that, we have to have it up on the screen and I have to be like, okay, on this date, what was the temperature? And on this date, what was the temperature? Because I can't see it. So I like charts where it's very obvious and there's no like fiddling around going on. So if you plan on sharing your chart with someone, anyone at all, even if it's just a friend, it might be easier to have a chart that has all the information in a screenshot versus the ones that just are super minimalistic and to get the information you have to like hover over things and click on things. So the other tool that's important to have is your thermometer. So I use a really simple, cheap drugstore pharmacist basal body te- basal body thermometer. It's like 12 bucks, right? Um, just like with my paper charts, I simply prefer to have the simple things that I can do it manually and be the person responsible for interpreting my own charts. But there are really fancy thermometers. It's all just like, what do you want to spend? What do you want to get out of the features you know you can get ones that have like a backlight makes it easier to see at night and you can get ones that are literally connected to the apps like the daisy is so remember i don't mind these apps and plenty of women i've helped plenty of women find success using them but you know if you're going to use them just keep in mind that they interpret your chart for you somewhat so you're not gaining as much of the life skill that comes with manual interpretation and if you have HA, there could be some room for error there. Like I definitely see people use the temp, the, the apps and the thermometers that are automated and it's like telling them that they're ovulating and they're definitely not because they have HA and they haven't ovulated at, at all. So just something to keep in mind, a super cheap, simple basal body temperature thermometer is going to be all you really need. <sighs> now, f- those are the two main tools. Honestly, the rest is your hands, your fingers. Um, but we're going to talk about some tips for tracking your temperature accurately. These tips are really important. I don't think I've had one client that I haven't had to troubleshoot wonky ass charts by revisiting these principles at some point. So remember that if your charts are looking super weird, a large part of the issue is likely some kind of user error or something that can be optimized in the charting method first. We always visit these method charting method basics before going down the rabbit hole of, oh, there's something wrong with you and you have a thyroid issue and you're broken like no nine times out of ten there's something small that we can fix and just note that these tips are only going to make sense to people with a basic understanding of charting already so if you want some help from the very 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 beginning let me know and i'll make that resource for you but um inside of the ha society if you join that group or get on the wait list the we have a whole course in there that about getting started from the bare basics. So I have um, like whole videos kind of going through the different steps and I spell it all out in there. So that can be a great place to go to start from the very, very beginning. Now, when you're taking your temperature to chart, you want to do this at the same time every day, ideally within one to two hours of your normal wake up time. So if you wake up at 7 a.m., but today 
you woke up at 6 a.m. or at 8 a.m., that's not going to make a huge, crazy difference. If you wake up at 4 a.m. on weekends and sleep to 9 a.m. on weekends, sorry, let me say it again. (laughs) If you wake up at 4 a.m. on weekdays and on the weekend you sleep until like 9 a.m., that's going to show a crazy spike in your chart, you know, every five days. And crazy spikes like that can be interpreted by the apps as ovulation when really you're just sleeping in so your temperature is higher and it can be interpreted like that by you too if you're not keeping an eye on the different possible reasons your temperature could be reading differently and waking up at a different time and taking your temperature at a wildly different time every day is going to contribute to that so i do have some clients you know with these situations right so say you wake up at 4 a.m on the weekdays we do have some clients who will either just keep an alarm for 4 a.m. to take the temperature and then just go back to sleep or we use the temperature adjustment calculators so you can find those I know one that I've used in the past is whenmybaby.com you just pop your usual wake up time into the calculator compare it to the time today that you woke up and the temperature that you had and it's going to calculate the likely difference but remember that this is not a foolproof tool and ideally only for people who wake up you know just a little bit outside of their usual wake up time if you usually wake up at 6 a.m but today you woke up at 3 a.m and you cannot go back to sleep you're best off just probably you know skipping that day or writing it like marking it but marking it as an unreliable temperature and in my personal opinion just getting back to it the next day versus using a temperature adjustment at that point because it's just such a big gap and the next tip is five consecutive hours of sleep before taking your temperature and you know i'm saying tips but these are actually like the correct way to do the protocol (laughs) so getting five consecutive hours of sleep before taking your temperature is hard to control but ideally this is how many hours of sleep that you've had and it's okay when it doesn't happen We all wake up in the night. Just note on your chart that you did wake up and it wasn't five straight hours of sleep. So no worries. Your temperatures are probably not going to be wildly different from just a quick wake up. But they might be a little bit higher that morning than usual. Just a little bit. And knowing this can just help you to identify why you're not seeing a... Why you are seeing a spike in your temperature so that you don't assume that something is happening that really isn't happening. And the next tip is to hold your thermometer in your mouth for 10 minutes. So this sounds like forever and I know and people hate it. But seriously, I have had many girls show me their charts and it looks like a sore tooth. And they think they have some kind of thyroid issue or they just don't know what's wrong. And in the end, it is because your temperature reading isn't stabilized yet. So think of those old thermometers before the digital ones where... Uh, like I don't know mercury or something in them I don't even know you had to hold them in your mouth for a long ass time before the temperature would even read you couldn't just pop it in and out in 30 seconds the reality is that the digital thermometers are still the same it takes a while for your mouth to warm up the temp the thermometer and to get an accurate reading so if you have one of those thermometers that just beeps after 30 seconds you know, try holding in your mouth for 10 minutes before you press the button to actually take the temperature. By letting it warm up like this, it's going to really help. If 10 minutes is a no-go for your lifestyle, you just do as long as you can, right? You'll see temperature stabilize and be much easier to read. Even if you can only do it for a consistent two minutes, it's going to read more accurately than the 30 seconds will. So something that I do is I set an alarm for 10 minutes earlier than my regular alarm. So I call that my temperature alarm Then I put it back in. Um, yeah, once the uh, temperature alarm goes off 10 minutes before I wake up, I put the thermometer in my mouth. I might do my meditations, my morning thoughts, or literally just fall back to sleep. And then the alarm goes off and then I can just take the temperature um, at that time. So... It's like a non, super non-intrusive way of getting it in my mouth for 10 minutes before I take the temperature. 
The next tip is don't move around. I can't give all of these temperature tips without mentioning the importance of staying in bed while you take the temperature. If you get out of bed, even just to pee and immediately take the temperature, it can screw up your reading. Truth be told, some women don't react as wildly to having got out of bed for just a little bit, but some really do. So you'll probably learn which bucket you fall into over time. But in the beginning, we don't know how your body will react. So you best just stay in bed until you've taken that temperature. Quick note here, right? Next tip is that alcohol will make your temperature spike the next day. This is just something to note. You'll see a spike by drinking alcohol. It's actually really fascinating just to see how it really affects you. And then the next tip, check for cervical mucus all of the time. A lot of women report, I don't really get much cervical mucus or I'm not seeing all that much. Um, And it's really common to start checking for mucus by only looking in your underwear when you go to the toilet and seeing if something has magically appeared there. But know this, cervical mucus does not exclusively land in underwear. It has no idea what underwear even is. Cervical mucus will secrete from your cervix and it will come out while you pee or poop when you wipe. This is, this makes it easy to miss if you only look into your underwear. So if you check diligently before and after all bathroom activities, it will become impossible for you to miss it. So hold your, oh, fold your toilet paper flat, right? So there's no creases and then wipe before you go to the toilet. Check for mucus on the toilet paper. Then when it's time to wipe when you normally would, do that and check the toilet paper again. And now you're checking before you wipe, after, and in your underwear. And the last tip, guys, this is the last one for the day, is consistent low temperatures. So this is like more of a something to look out for. And this is really common in HA, as I think I mentioned it already earlier. Your preovulatory temperatures, so the temperatures before you ovulated, should be at a minimum 36.4 Celsius which is 97.5 Fahrenheit post ovulatory. So after you've ovulated, they will spike to a minimum of 37 degrees Celsius, 98.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're not seeing a period and you're noticing that your temps are actually dropping below that, then you know that that's a tangible place for you to start working to actually improve with lifestyle factors. So those are my have to know tips for trackers with HA. But honestly, all trackers, like these tips apply to anyone who tracks their cycle. And I, yeah, I just want you to know (laughs) that if you go out on this journey, I just get so many DMs of people like, hey, can, can you tell if I ovulated or blah, blah, blah. And I just see, um, you know, all of these things pop up every single time. So get them nailed down and you'll have a really easy time tracking your cycle. Thank you so much for listening today, guys. Please subscribe to the podcast. And if you could head to iTunes specifically and leave a rating or review, that would help so much because it makes it easier for other people with HA who are Googling around to find the podcast really easily. So if you do that, you're doing a service to all of the women. Almost 90% of women have cellulite. And guess what? It's not their fault. We don't choose cellulite, but we can choose a different way to treat it. Meet Quo, Collagenase Clostridium Histolyticum, AAES, the first and only FDA-approved prescription injectable for moderate to severe cellulite in the buttocks of adult women. This non-surgical treatment is injected by an aesthetic specialist in 10 minutes or less. Individual results may vary. Do not receive if you are allergic to any collagenase or ingredients in Quo or have an infection at the treatment site. May cause serious side effects, allergic reactions including anaphylaxis and injection site bruising. Seek medical help right away for any signs of allergic hypersensitivity. Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions, if you have a bleeding condition or take medicine that prevents clotting. Most common side effects include bruising, pain, hardness, itching, redness, discoloration, swelling and warmth at the injection site. Ask your doctor about all possible side effects and for 
product information. If you're ready to get to the bottom of your cellulite, learn more and find a specialist at Quo.com.